All right, well, I'm just getting ready to do a little more sanding. And I'm gonna lightly go over it with one, uh, 150 again. And uh, so the down. I'm just gonna lightly go over with 150 again, just to kind of blend that black in. And make the burns a little bit less pronounced. Like you're trying to sand it back off if you want and that'll kind of blend it all together a little bit all right there now blow that off and hit it with some paper. I've got a couple cracks I got to deal with. I got one big crack right here, and I think that's it. So I'll deal with it now. And I need to get me some filler. And I want that to be kind of kind of dark, so I'm going to use coffee grinds on that. I'm just using, I keep these coffee grinds and uh, it doesn't matter, you can you can use uh, used coffee grinds, but you, you have to grind them a little bit more. So just grind them in your hands. Just grind them real good in your hands. All right. I'm just going to shovel it in that crack until it fills it up. Now some of it will get, get in your grooves right there, but that's fine. I'll show you. I'm just going to, I'll just stick my wire back on it. And just burn that right back down. Alright. Alright. A little bit of thin CA. set and harden up and then come back and re-sand it and that repair will have been made all right I'm just sanding and you see where the glue uh, went outside my repair by the time I get done with the finish and everything, that'll look just absolutely normal. But if you notice, I've, I've got uh, repair uh, CA and stuff in my in my grooves there. Well, once I finish doing my 220 sandpaper, I'll uh, I'll come back and recut those grooves. 220 is really nothing more than just kind of swiping over it quickly.
I'm damn near invisible. Yep, see? Clean the grooves right back out. Okay. Alright, that's ready to take the tenon off. Okay. Just getting ready to take this tenon off. And uh, I'm just going to do it with a jam chuck. I uh, made for smaller vase type things and all of that. <clears throat> Let's see how it turns. Oh, pretty good. Alright. I'm going to start out my half inch bowl gouge. Good to go. Alright, I'll just use my power sander sand that up and I'll be back in just a minute. Okay. Alright, well, I used the X car to uh, cut out these, these handles and uh, cut out two at a time and I can actually. Uh, using easel I can I can put as many of them in there as I want to as long as I can you know manipulate them around so you know and get as many as I can on one piece of, of board but what I like is that I don't have all these dabbling uh, saw marks to take off of there I just have basic sanding and you know uh, rounding over and things like that to do here and one thing I've done uh, before on my handles was I'd use a router with a roundover bit and round over these handles and things. Uh, but I'm going to use my Dremel and just round the corners over and all of that. And uh, I'm just going to use it. It's a bit plugged up. I'm just going to round over the corners. And I think I'll have to come back and re-burn those. Just take your time doing this. Don't get in a hurry. Round these over really nice. Okay, now I'm just getting ready to uh, to sand an indention into my handles to fit around my cup. Okay, and uh, I was thinking, you know, the best way to do this, and uh, you know, maybe wrapping sandpaper around the mug and doing it, but my mandrel for my for my drum sander, for my lathe drum sander, is about that same diameter, a little bit smaller, but it should work just fine. And all I'm gonna do is just sand, sand this, just like this, until I get my indention in there. Let's 
see how that's going to work. Okay, that one on the top looks good. Now I need to work on the very bottom. Be careful not to uh, not to damage your your thing. All right, we're getting there. We're almost there. Top looks good. All we need is the bottom. up my epoxy and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use black paint right here a couple rubber bands right here and that's what I'm gonna use to put all this together with all right so let's get the epoxy out it's just a two-part uh, 15 minute cure epoxy Looks pretty equal. Pretty equal. All right. Now, I'm going to take my black paint. I use acrylic paint. And all this is going to do is just color. Kind of add a little color, just a little bit, a little bit of color to the epoxy. Okay, I'm going to take my handle and my cup. I'm going to go ahead and put a rubber band up here around the top. You got to be quick because this epoxy sets pretty fast. Find out where I want to put the handle. I'm going to put it right there. That's where that crack is. I'll just take my epoxy. Coat this up right here real good. Just put it all the way across. And I really don't care if I actually get some of it off to the side or something like that because the look that I'm going for is uh, I want it to look like it's stuck together with pine pitch or something of that nature so now we're just going to put it on here and mash it in and I'm just going to leave all of this stuff on here. I'm not even going to try to take it off. I'm not going to try to scrape it or do anything with it. I'm just simply going to leave it just like that. And I'm going to allow this thing to finish out just like that. Okay. The finish I'm going to use on the outside is polycrylic from Minwax. Okay, and this is on the outside. And the reason that I'm using a, a finish on the outside, other than waxes and oils, is because the first time somebody washes this thing, the waxes and the oils are going to be gone, more or less. So uh, I'm going to use this. It'll give it a good water resistance on the outside because one problem I found with some of my others, uh, some of my first ones that I did was uh, I finished with oil, oil and wax, and uh, as people would wash them and and all, they would start leaking, even though they had epoxy on the inside. And what happens is moisture gets in this wood, and what happens? Wood swells. Okay and then it contracts back 
and so after repeated washings and stuff they started having trouble with them but I've had no trouble since I started using this and all I'm gonna do I'm gonna put two coats just something to seal the surface a little bit I'm just gonna brush it on I'm gonna brush it up to the top I'm not gonna go over the lip the lip will have epoxy But make sure, just make sure that you coat the whole thing really well. And I use, I try to use as thin a coats as possible. And this is, uh, like I said, it's polycrylic. And uh, I use thin coats. And I'll only put two. All I want to do is seal the surface. This says it's gloss, but I, I, I won't. I don't end up with a glossy surface. I don't want a glossy surface. Um, and I just brush it on thin. And always and pull from the thick places and put to the thin places. This way. Definitely make this thing. Uh, fairly waterproof you know you still you still have to be careful with how you wash it and all but just keep brushing and brushing and brushing okay, not getting the bottom yet go ahead and get the handle get the inside of the handle not put my epoxy on the inside yet. That will be the last step. I'll put this coat on and then once it's cured I'll sand it and then I'll put the second coat and once it's cured I'll come back with 320 or 400 grit and I'll sand it again to knock the sheen off and make it look kind of uh, rustic, sort of. Okay, well, all I'm doing now, I've got two coats of finish on here and it looks really nice, but I don't like glossy on these things. So I'm just knocking the sheen off with some 320 grit. Just knocking the sheen off is all I'm doing. And of course you could leave it on there if you wanted to. Okay, well it looks like the rain is about to let up. We still have little spurts. Anyway, I've got three mugs here that are that need to be treated. I've got two that haven't been treated at all. And I've got one out of maple that's already been had its first coat of epoxy put on uh, it was put on yesterday uh, but first things first these things need to be blown out make sure there's no dust inside no dirt no contaminants inside them and, uh, and we'll get started okay alright now I'm going to show you the epoxy that I use. It's called Max CLR. It's a two-part epoxy. It mixes two to one, and uh, well, I guess I guess it is going to rain. It mixes two to one. Now, this epoxy is used in the food industry for food contact. It is. It is food safe. I don't want to hear any any arguments with that because I've done my research and it is it is true. So, but what I've done here is uh, I've got it. I'm I'm just going to measure this out and set my cup on the on the scale. I'm going to try to go for about one and a half ounces of part A. 
here we go. And I like using these little, these little plastic knives for mixing. I just cut the knife off and I just use the end of a plastic spoon or anything like that. And then I want to just start mixing. Really, you know, kind of slowly. Make sure you get around all the corners and the edges and all of that. And just mix it up. Now this type of epoxy, which is really any type of epoxy, you have to mix it very, very thoroughly because if you don't, you'll end up with areas in, in your cast or whatever that remain soft. Okay, all right, now I'm ready to start coating these things on the inside. And what I use are these little chip brushes. Uh, I got these at Harbor Freight. I think that you can get like 36 of them for $8. So they're really cheap. But I'm just going to start putting it on the inside. A nice thin coat. I'm just going to start at the bottom and coat at the bottom. It's kind of hard for me to let you see down in there. Then I'll start working my way up the sides and get in the light where you can see what you're doing because you really don't want to miss a spot. You really don't want to be missing spots. And, and put a thin coat, not a thick coat, because it'll start running with you. Um, over time. It doesn't take long, just, just a few minutes to put a coat in. So just put it in there thin. Let it soak into the sides. And then your second coat will build up. You can see how it's getting coated in there. You don't want to use too much because it will run with you. But also, spreading it thin like this, you actually pull out all the air bubbles. There's no air bubbles. Even though you mix it slow, you're still gonna get air bubbles in the uh, epoxy. But, As you brush it in, you uh, now watch for bristles that might come off too. As you brush it in, brush it in thin, and it'll pull all the air bubbles out. And we're, we're just going to do it all the way up to the rim and right over the edge. I hope you can see this. Alright, well I've got one coat in here, one coat in here, and that was my second and final coat in here. Unless it doesn't pass quality control. Alright, so those three are well on their way. But this stuff takes, I mean it takes at least it says six hours before you can put the second coat and uh, give it at least a day to, uh, to cure up. Uh, I put that first coat on yesterday and now it's uh, tomorrow evening actually as far as that's concerned. But uh, in these two, I'll put the, the uh, final coat on tomorrow. Right. Now, I mix way too much. I've got, shoot, I've still got a good ounce or so left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm probably going to fill up my, my thing. But I'm going to mix some black paint in there with it. Pretty good bit. 
Hold on, let me back up. I know you can't see that. Again, I'm sorry about the rain, but I'm going to mix in some black paint with it. There's a, there's a good bit there. I want it uh, fairly opaque. I don't want it. I don't want it transparent. And then I'm going to take some mica pearl or a pearlette. I'm sorry. I'm going to mix, mix that in there with it. Not a whole lot. Not that much right there. Put that in there. That kind of gives the... Uh, this thing actually turns purple. And that is possible. Now I'll mix, mix those colors real good. And then I'll just, just pour this in. And between each layer, make sure you sand a little bit. Uh, I use 320 grit and just kind of rust up the surface a little bit. And I'm just going to pour it in. And getting close to a, pin, a couple of pin blades here. Getting close anyway. I'm get now that stuff is very very expensive so I don't want to waste any. I hate it that I actually poured that much. Didn't mean to. But there we go. And that'll be ready. And the chip brush and the mixing stick and everything else gets thrown in the trash. It won't be any good once it starts to harden up. Alright, just let me know that each and every mug that I make gets quality tested. Uh, the way I do that, I, I sit the mug on a paper towel and I fill it up with water. And I'll leave it sitting there for about an hour or so. Uh, just to, you know, and I'll lift it up and see if it's, uh, see if it's leaking. I'll check it, and if I need to, I'll put I'll put another coat of epoxy on the inside. Every one of them will be done that way. Okay, so there's all my beer mugs, or my wooden tankards, not steins, uh, in various stages of completion. These two are being tested. That one will be ready tomorrow. And these two will get their final coat of epoxy tomorrow. And I still have several more that I'm uh, working on. So uh, I'm getting ready for that homespun festival here in about four more weeks. Well, all right. Here we are at the end of another project. And uh, one I really enjoyed. This is my second uh, video on the... Uh, on the wooden tankards. Um, I may take the first one down. I don't know. I may leave it and just leave a link for this one. But uh, I don't have to worry about these being waterproof. Okay. Uh, with the epoxy liner inside there, it's impervious. Uh, I've made several of these things and I haven't had any even think about leaking. And uh, including mine it's uh this was my prototype and uh it's not as pretty as the others but <clears throat> i used i did it doing the same method and uh i've been using it now for uh maybe three months i guess and uh but I, and i use it i use it a good bit but uh anyway i hope y'all enjoyed this uh, but make sure if you decide that you want to make these for people or for yourself or whatever, water is wood's worst enemy. Okay? Uh, these things cannot go in a dishwasher. They cannot go in a microwave. Uh, 
don't even take them and put them in the sink that may maybe has water in it uh, to await being washed. These things, when you get ready to wash them, you wash them, warm soapy water, rinse them off, and dry them right then and set them up so they can air dry out and they'll be ready to use the next time. Uh, so, you know, try, try to remember that because uh, these things don't look good if they get soaked in water. They will expand and it will break up the, uh, the epoxy liner and they will leak. I did have one come back because of that and uh, the, the guys, uh, the guy got the mug from me and, uh, and his daughter kind of, his little uh, six or seven year old daughter, she commandeered it from him and, uh, and she drank milk out of it. And uh, well, he brought it back to me a couple weeks later and, and said, yeah, this thing's leaking. And, and I filled it up with water and sure enough, it was leaking. But what had happened was uh, they were washing it so much, it, the wood never had a chance to dry and it just kept swelling and swelling until it finally cracked through the epoxy. So, uh, you know, keep that in mind and, uh, you know, just uh, treat it like it's wood. Uh, as far as the finish on these beer mugs, uh, this epoxy is, a, is rated for food contact. Okay, uh, I've done my research. I, I know that these things are safe to drink out of, and I will entertain the comments. You know, uh, people want to know what I used and things like that. That's that's all great. But one thing I'm not going to do is get into an argument. I'm not going to get into an argument with anybody about food grade this, food grade that. Uh, you know, this stuff. You don't want to drink it out of the bottle, but once it's cured, it is food grade. It is it is food grade. So uh, I almost I almost got kicked off of woodchuckers, or I thought I was anyway, uh, getting into an argument with 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 a guy that uh, just you know he knew everything in the world. Uh, you couldn't tell him anything, but you know, and I was like, yeah, you know, they use this stuff in industrial use for food contact and. But he just kept on and on and on, and uh, the argument was getting more and more heated. And thank you, Mike Walt, for coming to my rescue. <laughs> uh, you thought I was going to get get by, didn't you? But uh, no, finally I just conceded. I said, "Okay, man, you know you're right." Uh, but the thing is, is Woodchuckers is a great place for wood turners to go on Facebook, and uh, and you know. I'll, I'll enjoy being on there. I like seeing the posts that people do. New po uh, new people and very experienced wood wood turners. They're all on woodchuckers and 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 buddy, they, there is some nice stuff on there. Good questions, good answers. But uh, I didn't want to get kicked off of there, so I conceded and uh, and just let him, you know, know it all. Uh, the Holiday Inn Express is full of people. But anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this project. I know I did, and uh, I've got several more to go. But you all have a good day, and let's break one out. Let's see just how she works. Let's see if it'll... Poured it in there too fast. Break down that head. All right. Y'all have a good day. And I will see you later.